Board member Drake. Board member Nysel. <laughs> Board member Steen. Here. <clears throat> Board member Van Blarkham. Here. Supervisor DeScafani. Here. Uh, Ellie will be here in five minutes. I have a motion to approve last month's minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Second. All, All in right. favor. Aye. Big news with a huge effort from Beth Waterman, Robert Drake, and the Conservation Advisory Council, we've been awarded the bronze level from NYSDEC for the Climate Smart Communities. Yay! Thank you, Beth. The application was approved in 20 actions in six categories for a total of 120 points. Uh, also, an application for downtown revitalization and New York Forward Grant has gone to the state. It's a very in-depth and professional looking application. Best of luck. We're still working on grants for Phoenicia Water and Pine Hill. Uh, stormwater retrofit with the parking lot. Um, this month coming up, we have uh, our budget, tentative budget, which is a 2.3% increase for general and 3.9% increase for highway. We'll be scheduling a public hearing later this month to exceed the tax cap with local law number five. And our next regular meeting is November 8th. Supervisors revenue report, zoning fees 350, police fees 30, ambulance fees 10,740 and 40 cents, town clerk fees easy pass 135, <coughs> franchise fee 17,531 and 11 cents, building permit fees 6,527 72 cents, dog licenses $53.50, planning board fees $42.65, um, the cell tower and medical arts rental $2,121.34, justice fees $9,395, Phoenicia water rents $4,000, vital statistics $726, ambulance donation $100, AWSMP reimbursement 175, STR receivable $17,407.95 for a total of $69,335.67. Communications? So um, I can't list all the activities going on, but I'll try to hit the highlights. So all our activities are listed on our website, which is accessible through any cell phone or tablet or computer, shandaken.us. Uh, the Fall Nisha Festival starts Saturday, October 7th. Uh, the scare, if you'd like to be in the Scarecrow Contest, I guess there's still room? Yep. Sam? Yep. Uh, email PhoeniciaRotaryNY at gmail.com. Also on October 7th, the Pine Hill Community Center has a food truck from 5.30 to 9 and a concert from 7 to 9. And also on October 7th, there's a concert with the Flying Cat music uh, at Phoenicia Methodist Church at 7.30. And of course, the Phoenicia Farmers Market is still in Phoenicia at the Parish Field till October 29th. October 29th. 
And October 15th, the Phoenicia Library has Glory Days of Fly Fishing in Phoenicia program um, from 1 to 3 p.m. Saturday, October 24th, an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast at the Big Indian Alvaria Firehouse by the Ladies Auxiliary from 8 to 11 o'clock. And you can still, for those people that always keep asking, yes, you can still recycle your plastic bags and films at Wellness RX Pharmacy in Phoenicia, Pine Hill Community Center, Town Hall during recycling days, and the Farmer's Market. Two more. Uh, computer Fixer is at the Phoenicia Library, Saturday, October 21st. You need to make an appointment with that, and it is free. And the doo-wop dance is back at the Parish Hall, October 21st. And also, remember, November's coming, and remember to shop small. Please go to our local stores and restaurants. And also, check your restaurants. There's quite a few that offer midweek specials for locals. Because we're the ones that keep these companies going. You know, they're going to make it with just the summer crowd and the ski crowd. So let's help them out. That's it. Thank you, Joyce. Community, committee reports on uh, ambulance. Rich. Good evening. Oh. The September 2023 report of the Town of Shandaken Ambulance total calls received was 26. Mutual aid was given twice to the Town of Olive. Uh, mutual aid was not received. The kids are back in school now, and we get to enjoy the wonders of the fall season. The chill that brings back the comfort of a nice hoodie and a delectable warm cup of tea embraces our town. And with arrives one of the most beautiful seasons one could ever ask for, at least in my humble opinion. That said, the beauty of our foliage and other area attractions during, this fall, during the fall bring many visitors from near and far. And with that, a sober reminder that albeit it may, be a dip, it may be difficult to pay full attention to the road despite the natural beauty and other distractions you're surrounded by, pedestrians abound in our area, both native and transient, or transient. As comfortable as you may be getting home on your particular route, remember that not only are you sharing that road with people who know it as well as you do, some of your fellow travelers, may be less familiar with the roads. So let's address a long-standing elephant in the room. It takes significantly longer to get places lately. We all feel it. Be patient and understand the driver may, be, may not want to operate a motor vehicle outside of their comfort level. Do not pass in no passing zones or take unnecessary risk to make up inconsequential travel time, whether due to principle or frustration. Anyone who has had the ditch to the shoulder so an oncoming car passing in their lane after misjudging their space can relate, especially on Route 28, myself included, and likely half of the people in the audience tonight can relate to that exact scenario. It isn't fun. Don't be that person. Be particularly cognizant in forest preserve access areas, fishing, public fishing access points, or hamlets. Adding to this is the fact that our kiddos are now waiting roadside or returning home from school on buses. Don't ever pass a bus displaying any lights ever. To those who are visiting, there are not many crosswalks in these mountains, so utilize a little common sense, and at the very least, look both ways before crossing the road. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Kevin, any police reports? Sure. Uh, for the month of September, there was a total of 122 incidents, three summons, and two arrests. Thank you. Building zoning, Ellie. Uh, building report for September 2023. Uh, building department issued 25 building permits, two certificates of occupancy, 16 certificates of compliance, three flood permits, issued zero stop work orders. That's it. Thank you. That's good. Uh, Joe, do you want to give a museum report? Uh, sure. Um, Our new museum director. Even if it's just a hello. Prevoy. Uh, I am honored to have been selected as the new director of the Shandaken Historical Museum. As a longtime resident of Shandaken, I would occasionally visit this beautiful Pine Hill Museum, first out of curiosity, then to do research on local people, stories, and locations. I found the rich and colorful history of the 12 hamlets of Shandaken completely fascinating. Since then, I have learned of people like Nancy Smith and Kathleen Myers, 
who worked hard to develop and maintain the museum for residents and visitors. It's an honor to be able to follow in their footsteps. I am looking forward to maintaining our museum and making it grow and flourish into an even more valuable Shandaken resource. I invite you to visit the museum, to look around, enjoy yourselves, and share ideas. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Sam. Thank you, Sam. Hey, Sophie, do you have anything on the housing committee? Oh, sure. You'd like to talk about? Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, updates from the housing committee. We had our meetup this past Tuesday, and it was really awesome. Thanks, everybody who came out, and we learned a lot from a lo several different local agencies and providers and we're going to be following up with organizations like Home Share Woodstock, People's USA, and Catskill Neighbors to sort of be like fueling different options and opportunities that we have. Um, but we had 80 people who came out to the event, which I think for a first time is pretty great. Um, and you know, it, it brought about a lot of more ideas and ways that we can be doing not just outreach from the committee with information, but how we can help connect e people in the community with one another. So perhaps there's some Facebook group someday. Um, but basically right now, we also have a new email account. Um, it's shandakenhousing at gmail.com. So please reach out to us with housing related things there. Um, and yeah, big bravo to everyone who worked on the New York Forward grant. I think it's pretty exciting and could mean good things for housing too, so yeah. Thank you, Sophie. All right, public comments on resolutions. and uh, I just wanted to announce that Shama Davis and I are going to do the turkey trot again this year. It's going to be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I think it's the 25th, if I'm not mistaken. And the website will be up soon, and registration will be there. And it will benefit um, the Shenaken Parks and Rec, especially the new playground beautification. And I think that's it. If anyone has any questions or wants to make a donation or volunteer, you know where to find me. <laughs> Thanks, JC. Hillary. Hi, Hillary Smith. Um, I have just a question about the, the tentative budget. 
um, before the public hearing, will there be um, will there be additional information provided, like the line item, like this this is just the the summary of departments, and it basically shows you, you know, compares last year's what was expected and this year's what is expected, but there isn't any. Um, information about you know what was actually expended and what revenues actually did come in so it's kind of hard to understand you know what all of these things mean when I don't really understand what is being spent and what is coming in um, when I look at other towns preliminary budgets that have been put out for um, you know public review they're hundreds of pages long because they, you know, they itemize it. They show everything so that you can see all of the different expenditure lines, you know, copying, um, mail expenses. Uh, it goes on and on and on. But um, ours is just kind of concentrated into sort of um, very general categories that make it difficult to understand, you know, um, what actually is driving these budget numbers. And so I'm wondering if you'll have. You know the full budget, so we can see, you know, a better, a better um, detailing of, of all of these individual expenditures and incomes. Yes, I thought so too, but you had another question. No. Okay. <laughs> Well, the, the budget that you saw is the same budget style that we've done before me and Pete, Demotica, Bob Cross, before that. I mean, it's not any, it's never been any more detailed than that. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess maybe it's, now, now is the time to consider providing more information for the taxpayers to understand what what, what is actually um, causing these numbers to be what they are <laughs> because, you know, like I said, they're just added up into general categories and uh, makes it difficult for us to really understand without seeing expenditures. We don't know, you know, how much we have in the reserve funds, you know, are we dipping into our savings? There's all kinds of information about the, the financial health of, you know, of the town that it will be it seems like this is the appropriate time for all that information. The, the state Maybe does that. The comptroller's office does um, many audits. Um, and each year there's an audit done of the town, and it keeps the fiscal stress level at a certain place where it needs to be. Uh, we can look at those audits online? Mm, um, I can try and find those, but they're with the state. I'll see what, what we're up to now. They're doing 2021 right now, but it's done to up to 2020. But we do know how much we're spending out of, you know, out of these different lines. Well, of, of course, that's how you make a budget. So right. is, is so it is possible there, for us to itemize? Yeah, can we see more information about... about well, we have it itemized, don't we? We have it itemized. I mean, it's posting, on... Posting, sharing, or making it available. Yeah. Well, that you know, it goes to our our accountants, and our accountants work with the state, and they work with what's on our books right on the computer to do the AUD.
information to kind of understand where all, where all the money is coming in and where all the money is going out. Well, I mean, it says where it's all going out. That's what the budget is. Is it possible for us to post a more detailed itemized list without printing, as you said, hundreds of pages of paper? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a yeah. QuickBooks expert. I understand we use QuickBooks, but I would think it's a simple report to run. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I do that report. Decades, I do that report every month. I mean, I have to. So know we should where. be able to do a full line item export, uh, turn it into something that it's Joyce not can post much, on the website. It's it's really not. I can do that, but it's not much more detailed than what is there on the budget. I mean, every single transaction we do no. all year long is in there. We could, it's we could, detailed, we could generate. Well, it not really. <clears throat> It's just specific to the day of when you do the run. Well, I think she's not asking for just like the account balances that day, but rather as if you were to balance your checkbook at the end of each month, every single deposit, every single withdrawal, every single transaction the town makes. I, I think that's what Hillary's looking for. Well, yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. But I was, I was and maybe wondering. there's something between that 5,000 no, line report <laughs> and the 12 line report that would be in line, as Hank said, maybe we could define the level of detail we're looking for that would meet the satisfaction of people. And I mean, QuickBooks exports hundreds of, I used to, I haven't used it in decades, but I, it's probably gotten better. Well, I'm, I'm sure you can come into the office and I'll put it out for you. Yeah, but do we think she's the only one that has those questions? Do we what? Yeah, do we think she's the only one that wants to see those lines and what was spent and what, how close we think? Why? You think there's a lot of people who I mean, it doesn't matter if there's a lot or a little. I think if it's something that we don't have to, like... There's at least two so now I'm picking up on. <laughs> no, if, Barb, sure. if, if Barb can do the list, if Barb she can, knows that I think QuickBooks she doesn't... Uh, run uh, I've never done QuickBooks, I'll ask I never Barb will. what she could run off Whatever run as off detailed as she it. can. It won't, it won't show every... I mean, Another reason we don't want to work in that office. I think the argument being the more detail we can provide... Yeah, we'll, we'll get it more it doesn't matter than, if it's good than it is everything. now. I think sure. we're officially saying we're going to Barb and yes. seeing the best she can well, do. Barb, we're going to good night's sleep. Yeah. If you need more, we'll yeah, revisit I, I it. Mean, no, Barb's not, not watching. No big deal. Sure. <laughs> so, we have a QuickBooks um, expert in the yeah. house. Just, just to inform you, each month you can receive the supervisory committee bus from the secretary's a consolidated funding report. Yeah. That will show receipts and expenditures yeah. or individual line items without expressly telling you exactly what all those expenditures were for the month. So what you can do is take that consolidated monthly report, it goes year to date, and shows you each line item, what was budgeted, how much was expended. Yeah. And you can copy that, paste it onto an Excel spreadsheet. All you have to do is use the existing pages without adding pages and add a column to show expenditures to date. And that's how you amortize and build your budget forward. And that's why everybody's asking, because they want to know where these numbers are generated from. And you can see the expenditures on that line and where it's going, and you can see it's justified to raise 10%, 4%, or no percent. That's oh, Yeah, you had that in your computer, right? That was how that was all done. You did that I for years? That. I did yeah. all that. Yeah. <clears throat> Hillary, I have a question for you. Um, do you know off the top of your head which towns that you've looked at that actually have these detailed things so I can look them up and compare contrast and see how they differ from our setup? Did you find an ideal example? I didn't, I, I didn't do that much detail. No, that was a good I idea. Could, yeah. but you can look at the town of Ulster. There's this like so okay. comprehensive sure. thing. Obviously, it's a much more um, uh, complicated of a town. It has you know, multiple sewer districts, and, but all of those things are clearly spelled out. And it, and the supervisor. A wealth of information about the, the financial, um, you know, yeah, I just want to yeah, look and, at them side the, by side and, and see. The supervisor is an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a bookkeeper and an accountant. I mean, I, like, yes, there we, we do. Accounts. That's right. There, there are. Thank you. Thank you. For money. More questions on, is this about a resolution? Okay. Thought maybe you did.
calm because they tend to get a little fired up and come a little quick and maybe people don't know what I'm trying to say. And the reason I get frustrated is because I know you've been here a long time, Peter, and I don't see why you just can't do the things that we know to do. You should know to do. So, I'm gonna talk about resolution 115, 23. It's a resolution to support digital data being submitted by the planning board. I wanna thank Hillary for introducing this idea. It was one of those aha moments in the town, I think, where we went, like, bang your head and go, we should have been doing this all along. Good idea, great idea. I'm thankful the town board wants to support this fully. But Peter is supervisor. This resolution is a memorializing resolution. It has no teeth. It doesn't do anything. In order for this to have teeth, it has to be adopted into the code, which requires an adoption of a law. That requires a public hearing. Grace, I explain to you, site plan review and sketch plan review are under the code. The requirements to submit are under the code. The site plan checklist is literally taken from the code. If you were to require electronic submissions, it has to be done in the code to have teeth. Otherwise, the applicant can say, I'm not required by the code. Is that clear? Pretty clear. So, <sighs> I stay calm. So I think what you need to do is change this resolution to a resolution to set up a public hearing so that you can have the public hearing to move this forward. That's a way to support it. What I feel is this resolution came forward because Peter's running for office and wants to pat himself on the back for trying to take an idea that was presented by Hillary because of a situation she was presented with at our planning board. Again, we all recognize something we need to change and I think it needs to be changed. You guys do with the resolution what you want but obviously, the leadership is not there. After your fourth year as supervisor, 10 years on the board, you still don't understand these things. Battles we had in planning about planning board appointments, changes to the code, changes to the bylaws, and you sit there with a smug look on your face. Like Do you have anything no. more to say, Rob? This is about so, keep it to yeah. the resolution. Okay, I am keeping it to the resolution. I would ask for better leadership and knowing that this needed to be done Keep it to properly. Resolution. And you can do with this memorializing resolution what you want. Thank you. Vivian. Okay. Uh, on the same resolution, I am very happy that the board is putting this in the resolution form because that's what we can do for now. And it's a, bit, it's a step in the right direction to comply with the open meetings law that, of New York State, which requires that documents that are going to be discussed at any open meeting need to be posted on the town website or otherwise distributed to the public or available to the public. And they recommend posting because it's easier and more, more accessible be at least 24 hours before the meeting at which it's going to be discussed. So this complies with the Open Meetings Law of New York State. And I think that's been discussed with the Planning Board uh, for some time now, and now it's actually going to be put into action. Uh, so I'm very happy that they've taken this step. I'm supporting the resolution. And I, if this needs to be further put into the town code, which I understand what Rob is saying, then I think it needs to be done because we have to comply with the state law on this. And I, I'm sorry that people <laughs> like Joyce have to have more work to do, but uh, you know we're really grateful to be have to have someone who can do it. And um, I'm just happy to see this being done. So do you want to do a public hearing when we do the tax cap one? Before we do, I'd like to just comment, since we've now had two people comment on it, that we did discuss this. It's, it's tied to what I brought up before. And so far, we've been very fortunate 
in recent years, everyone who submits something to the Town of the Waco Plan seems to be doing it digitally. And uh, it would require a change of code for us to require them to do so. It would not require a change of code for us to digitize through scanning, photographing, or otherwise digitizing a submission. So we can move forward with this resolution and see how much of a problem it is. And if it becomes a problem that Joyce all of a sudden is needing to go to Staples or Kinko's to scan P-sized drawings, which we have seen in this town, uh, then we could look to see whether or not we need to add it to code. But we can move forward. Um, or we can request. Right we away. don't have to request. We can request. We can and request. if it becomes a problem, all the bids did. We can take it on. It's yes. a modern way to yes. do things. So I, I still think big we projects should have it digital. Move forward with this resolution. Thank and you. And then, if it does become a problem, absolutely, Rob, we should look at adding it to the town code. Yeah, it costs money. Yeah. The town cannot digitize site plans. We don't have the capability to do that. I do. Okay, then that's good. I'll be knocking on your door with like documents that are. Like, like, a, like a, a photo is not is not sufficient for for putting you know plans for for review. They need to be. A PDF would original, be the preferred. Original PDF so that yeah. you can. Yeah. No, I'm aware. I'm aware. And I do have the capability. So so I do have the ability. In, and as Joyce said, uh, we can request, request. And if it becomes a problem, and yes, I do think we should move towards changing it and adding yeah. it, but we can still move forward immediately with tonight's resolution as well. Can I, I'll just add again, as was just said, it needs to be more specific too, because as Chris can say, what size project needs to submit an electronic version? Somebody doing an additional garage? I mean, where's the line drawing? That needs to be explained in the law. Do you want to have them do it for the sketch plan meeting when they meet with the planning board at that point? Or do we wait and see if there's a lot of changes that happen in the sketch plan meeting? Maybe they submit it when it goes to site plan. These are things that have to be discussed in detail in the law so that it can't be skirted. A requirement and a recommendation is well and good. It's great. I mean, I'm already hearing, we can't do it. You have a machine. The town doesn't have a machine, so now we're buying things. Now we're back at budget. Oh, no, again, as we said, since they've all been coming in digital, we will continue to request. And yeah. if it becomes a problem, then we will need to change to code. But it I hasn't actually been, been a problem yet. If presented, I think it moved to the yeah. public hearing. But also, it's not just receiving it digitally, but making it available on the website. That's really the key thing. Is right. That they, they have to and the change it. to code so we will make it available on the website. So. A resolution tonight will make it available on the website. A change to code will not. Are you discussing just commercial projects or capital projects that affect communities or the whole town? Or are you discussing digitizing every application that's submitted to either the planning board or the zoning board or the, or the, or the zoning office? At I mean, this juncture, we're just talking about a request, and the request will go to mainly larger projects, commercials. Because but we'll fields and I've, I've looked at a lot of plans that connect site plans and I've looked at a lot of applications where the applicant draws the plans. Yeah. And a lot of these, I mean, you might have to get an architect. Right. A, we don't want to force somebody to have to get an engineer or an architect if they don't. In the, in the zoning appeals board or the planning board, the planning board right now, if you look at what you know they're up against, uh, on a monthly basis, they're all volunteers and they sit there for hours. And, you know, if everything's digitized, like you said, um, you can get people coming from all over that just want to come in and say whatever they want to say, even though it doesn't affect them. And it's going to, I think, change the, the venue of the meeting and it's going to prolong the meeting and the process. So I, I think if you're going to do that, it should just be commercial projects capital projects and things that affect the whole town or, or a large community like Pine Hill or Venetia or Mount Tremper. Um, well, before we... Just normal applications. Thank you for the clarity. Um, but before we put exact wording down, I, I think we'll just say and leave it as it is and we'll try and hone it as a to a better resolution for a law change and do a law amendment. The parameters are so broad at this point. And you just 
said it. We're only going to ask for large projects. Well, who's the judge of what's a large project? Exactly. That's what I said. We're going to find some exact words. Ma'am? Please. Please, um, Grace. Perhaps if it's a request you want to word it that any application submitted to the planning board or the ZBA alongside an engineer drawn site plan must be submitted to the PDF format. If you're just trying to cover yourself for now as you develop a law. Okay. Then that at least would give you those larger projects. And those plans that I certainly cannot get, I can't. We don't have the capability to do All right. No, right. No, no, projects no, no, that no, are no. projects that are Does it require an engineer's site report. Engineer or architect. Michelle, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, well, just I just to clarify because I think some people are confused what the word digitized or PDF actually refers to. You can actually take a photograph of anything, it could be a hand drawn plan, upload it, and put it in a format that you can send as an email for the PDF. So you don't have to get it architecturally rendered drawing. You can actually photograph your own drawing of your garage. And it's a way of communicating. So you're sending back a picture of your drawing to the people that need to see it. So right. that's what the words kind of loosely um, use right here. But I, I just and it's shareable. It. And it's shareable. So my question is, um, you know, the website such as it is, where would, potentially, where would these uh, PDFs be listed? Under building it, services? It would be under each project like we do now. Upcoming like, um, meetings and event, uh, upcoming agendas and meetings. So when the planning board has their meeting and they have um, the project Aerostar, right now the link takes you to the legal ad. So there'll be another link that says data and that will take you to the PDFs for that project. And then when it's over, it's gone. And we have unlimited space and it's free for us to upload it. So that will cost us. I'm sure they can afford them. So, I'm just saying it's not as easy as the Thank you. Well, I think we can all agree that this resolution probably needs a little bit of work, specifically in the verbiage. I, would, I wouldn't be mad if we tabled it for tonight and revisited in November to set up a public hearing to change the, the code. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but Unless we're going to sit here and workshop language, no. which seems like an extra 15 minutes of work. Um, there's no rush. The board is very eager to support this. That's why we tried to push it through so fast, but it's okay to take a breath and, and wait another month. That's just my opinion. I think that's a good Motion idea. Motion to table resolution 115.23. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to uh, make a public hearing for November 8th at 6 p.m. If we want to do it before the budget hearing, that's, that's cool. To do it before the budget hearing? It's <coughs> fine. Okay. Second? Anyone? I'll second that. Everybody okay with that timing? Yep. Can I teach a conference? No, before this year. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other questions on resolutions? Let's move forward, Kevin. Resolution 11023, resolution to pay all bills. Whereas the Department of Audit and Control require town boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming into the town for payment to number and total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorize the following vouchers paid. General, $251,644.55. Highway, $230,301.11. Phoenicia Water, $12,333.23. Pine Hill Water, $2,812.11. Phoenicia Lights, $628.06. Chichester Lights, $84.20. Pine Hill Lights, $351.47. And the Shandaken Septic Maintenance District, $2,053.61 for a total of 
$500,208.34 and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Dysel? Yep. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Dees for final. Yes. Resolution number 111-23, resolution adopting tentative budget as preliminary budget. Whereas the Town of Shendaken has prepared a 2024 tentative budget for review, therefore be it resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Shendaken hereby adopts the 2023 the 2024 Four. tentative Four. budget as the 2024 preliminary budget for the Town of Shendaken and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Vibarka? Yeah. Supervisor Dees Fine. Yes. Resolution 112-23, set public hearing on the 2024 preliminary town budget. Whereas a town hearing is held every year for the purpose of hearing all those in favor or against the adoption of the preliminary budget for the town of Shandaken as the annual budget. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Shandaken will meet and review the 2024 preliminary budget and hold a public hearing thereon at the Shandaken Town Hall on Wednesday, November 8th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. preceding the regular monthly meeting. And at such hearing, any person may be heard in favor or against the pub preliminary budget as compiled or for or against any item or items therein contained. And I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Barkham? Yes. Supervisor Lisa Kapani? Yes. Resolution number 113-23, set meeting adopting Town of Shandaken Local Law Number 5 of 2024. Four. Four. The three. Local Law no, three. 23. 23. Right, Local 23. Law of 2023. Scare me. I scared myself. A local law to override the tax levy limit established in General Municipal Law Section 3-C. Whereas the town of Shandaken foresees the necessity to exceed the tax levy limit established in general municipal law section 3-C and therefore be it resolved the town of Shandaken town board would hold a special meeting and a public hearing on October what's the date that's what you got to tell We're me looking what's what's a good date um, All, all our Mondays are taken. Um, is there a free Wednesday? Not really. Uh, you could do a Tuesday if you're early. Court's later. They, Court's they're later. in there as long okay. as it's a Tuesday night. Any Two. should be fine at 1 p.m. Six? Oh, you want to do 1 p.m.? No. That's what it says in the resolution. I prefer That's when seven. our last one was at 1 p.m. Do you want to do six? I can make it work, too. Okay. Evenings are always better. Yeah. What time? Six. Six or seven. Says we can do a Tuesday if it's at six o'clock. Six o'clock? Yeah. You okay with Tuesday at six? Yep. Tuesday what Tuesday? Which one? Tuesday the seventeenth or the twenty fourth? Twenty fourth. Yeah, I won't be around for the seventeenth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Six p.m. Okay, October twenty fourth, two thousand twenty three, at six p.m. at the Shandaken Town Hall, seven two zero nine, Route twenty eight, Shandaken, New York, one two four eight zero. To hear all those in favor and against the adoption of said law in accordance with general municipal law and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Dees Kapani? Yes. Resolution 114-23, resolution approving public assembly permit for the Phoenicia Turkey Trot. Whereas the Town of Shandaken Town Board under Section 59 of the Town Code has the sole authority to approve applications for the purpose of public assembly in excess of 500 persons. And whereas the town board recognizes the benefit of public events to the economy of the town and also recognizes the necessity to provide adequate protections and a safe environment for its residents and participants alike. And whereas the town is in receipt of documentation illustrating compliance under the law, providing the necessary insurance, permits, security, parking, lighting, sanitation, emergency and evacuation requirements, and whereas the town board is satisfied with the application from the Phoenicia Turkey Trot for their event to be held in Phoenicia, New York on Saturday, November 25th, 2023 from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Shandaken Town Board hereby approves the permit for a public assembly to the Phoenicia Turkey Trot for their event and that a certified copy of this resolution shall suffice as the approval certificate and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Nysel? Yes. Board Member Steen? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor D. Scafani? Yes. Open public comments. Angela.
Good evening, my name is Angela Galindo, I'm from Phoenicia, and I'm here to talk about the American Legion. Um, it was chartered by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization and now has nearly two million members. Their mission, to enhance the well-being of America's veterans, their families, our military, and our communities by our devotion to mutual helpfulness. We also have the Sons of the American Legion, who has more than 317,000 members. The wider chapters um, do a lot of charity work, and we have the Auxiliary. And the Auxiliary was founded in 1919 and has nearly one, mem one million members. Our mission, and there's a method to, to all this nonsense, <laughs> not nonsense, but in the spirit of service, not self, the mission of the American Legion Auxiliary is to support the American Legion and to honor the sacrifice of those who serve by enhancing the lives of our veterans, military, their families, both at home and abroad. We want to be sure that we're reaching all our veterans, military and their families, which is the main reason why I'm here tonight. Um, it is our way of saying thank you for your service. We can do so much to enhance the lives of our veterans, but they need to know we're here and that we can do that. And to give you an example of the things that we have done, um, our post in Phoenicia, we donate to many organizations, all of the entities do. The food pantry, the fire department, and um, we also donate to the VA hospital in Albany, and we send gift cards, we donate to their gift shop, and they give gift cards to their veterans so they can buy gifts for themselves. Christmas, for example, is a special time for us. With the other entities at our post, we host the children's Christmas party at the parish hall. Um, all of the entities donate and we go Christmas shopping, we buy presents. Parents register their kids, tell us about their kids, and we buy gifts according to those um, suggestions. And we help Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus donate, uh, distribute the gifts, Food is served, there's more trinket, trinkets and whatever. Um, this year marked the 100th birthday for our post-950. We had a centennial dinner, and all of the donations and the non-perishable foods were given to the Phoenicia Food Pantry. Now here's something I know some people don't know. We have major fundraising events. We have St. Patrick's Day in March. We have the chicken barbecue in July. And then we have the Italian night dinner in September. Everyone is welcome to those. In June, we were fortunate to go back to the Phoenicia Elementary School for the Flag Day celebrations. And it was so refreshing and so rewarding to see these kids, elementary school kids, participating and enjoying the um, festivities. It was very heartwarming. And this year, the um, auxiliary also donated to the Shandaken Recreation Program so some parents could get help with um, the bus trips that the kids take. This one I have a hard time talking. Another donation the auxiliary makes is an award to an auntie or a senior who has exhibited interest in American history, Americanism, and our military. What is Americanism? Americanism, true Americanism, is an ideology that is continually nurtured within one's soul, through individual daily actions, thoughts and beliefs, and what their responsibilities are to be, blessed to live in one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. This year, our award was given to Liam Bartow, an auntie or a senior. I invited Liam to be here with us tonight, but he's away at college. His response to my invitation was, I'm so glad to hear that. I hope you're able to reach out to more people tomorrow night. What you are offering is a great service to the community. I wish I could make it, but sadly I won't be in town. I'll be in college, but feel free to read the letter. I'll be watching online and showing my support. I'm going to read that letter because it says more than I ever could. Dear American Legion Auxiliary Unit 950, my name is Liam Bertow, a graduating Ontario senior, writing to thank you and show my appreciation for this award, which I am so proud to have received. I feel honored to be recognized for this important award. 
Thank you for all of your service and dedication to this country, and more importantly, the community, which I feel extremely lucky to have lived in. I will hopefully continue to study and learn what our veterans have experienced and have their memory live on. I hope to uphold those values of Americanism needed to keep our democracy and our country safe. I am glad that you have offered this award and engaged with students. Once again, thank you for all of this and everything that you will keep doing. Your service will not go unheard. Best regards, Liam Bertow. Liam, we are so proud of you. God bless you. Um, during our meetings, discussion ensued regarding the singing of the National Anthem at Glenbrook Park prior to the Little League Games. A member of our auxiliary made a motion to purchase the American flag and the POW MIA flag for Glenbrook Park. And we also bought the same for the town hall as well. Needless to say, the motion passed unanimously, so we proudly present these to the town of Shandaka. Applications for membership of the American Legion, the Sons of the American Legion, and the American Legion Auxiliary. By supporting our post, you are helping us to support our active military and veterans and their families, as well as our community. Thank you for your time. God bless. Thank you, Angela. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Yes. Hank. My name is Hank Williams. I'm a veteran of Vietnam. I've lived in this community for 45 years. I'm going to use the auxiliary as a segue into what happened at this town hall at that dais maybe a month ago about a chairman of a committee that refused to ask the committee to stand up to say the Pledge of Allegiance. As a matter of fact, the chairman even refused to look at the flag and look this way. I think it's disgraceful, it's appalling, it's disrespectful to every veteran and every patriot in this town. This town of Shandaken in Mount Tremper, there was a fort, the Shandaken Fort. In 1779, it was built. One of the first American flags, the continental flag, was flown over that fort, I mean that fort. And to this day, an American flag flies here in this town hall. And it's flown ever since I was born in every school I attended, every military base I've ever been on, and in any town hall and in any public meeting that I've ever attended. And I think that this person, and I'm not gonna mention any names, was appointed by the town board to sit on this committee and for some reason became appointed to become the chairman of the committee. And I believe that this person is using or used this town of Shandaken dais and committee as a platform to do however she feels about dislike to the American flag, the United States of America, or even the people, the patriots of this town. And I think this board, you appointed this person, and I think this person should be unappointed, at least as chairman. And if she does not like this community and the flag of the United States, there's a lot of people coming across the southern border that would give their right arm put their hand on their heart, and say that pledge to become a citizen of this country. And maybe the person that is disrespecting at least every veteran in this town should maybe head south and find a place where she'd be happy, this person would be happy, and could support a flag of that country. And I hope that you take me seriously and that you, as a board who appointed her, would do something about it because children watch this channel, and to me, it's, again, disgusting. 
So. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Hank. We'll consider it. By the end of 2024, it has to be earmarked, and by the end of 2025, it has to be spent. It might be even 2026, but so we've only have a hundred. We only have a few years to go. Right. Yeah. And, and so, do we have um, plans to discuss how we're we were just talking about it as a board a couple of weeks ago, um, speaking how we needed to at least. Uh, earmark those funds for projects around the town and there that's where we ended it uh, the only thing that's been earmarked has been some work on the parking lot in Pine Hill we talked about doing some replacements for sidewalks both Venetia and Pine Hill but we haven't really focused a workshop on that yet if you have any suggestions and we were talking about having an open forum for the community to throw some suggestions at us. Well, uh, we do right. have the comprehensive planning process going on, so it might be something that if we have a consultant on board soon, exactly. that, that we may be able to wrap some of that um, into our survey into, during yeah, that. Exactly. Into our public participation exactly. Process because um, you know we do want to we do want to do something good with that money, and yep. we all want to feel good about how it's being spent. Yep. And you know we don't want to see it. Nickel and dimed off to no. you know, various no. projects and not really doing anything substantive and noticeable. Of course, it's, you know, free right. windfall money for yeah. relatively free money. <laughs> it is. It is right now in a money market account that's earning about five percent. So at least it's not languishing in a very low uh, interest account. and I'm also the director of the Mort Memorial Library in Pine Hill and maybe not all of you know that I'm the only person working there I'm the director and the only person working there so I have a lot of my on my plate and uh, I have been cutting branches down at the library and reached out to the highway department and asked if they could maybe remove it and that was about two months ago and I know the town owns the building and the property and I called again and asked, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was hoping that maybe somebody could put in a good word for me and see if they could, I don't care what they do with it, maybe just bring it to the next property or slap it off, it's not that much, <laughs> but please, can I get some help here? Thank you.
And I really didn't want to sell it. And the offer that he made me, I had to put my grandkids through college. So I said, gee, I'll sell it to you. We walked it, and he loved it. He came up on a Sunday, on a Saturday night, slept over, his wife loved it, his kids loved it. Well, about a week later, just before we were ready to shake hands on the deal, his wife came up and they stayed during the week. And his wife said, told me, I'm not gonna buy this piece of property. She said, I might as well sit next to a stone quarry. All we hear is bulldozers, backhoes, excavators, trucks going in and out, dust and noise. Well, it's far enough away from my house and I don't hear that that much. But when I go back here, I do. So I lost a sale. And then I realized that's a, that's a residential zone. He's got backhoes, bulldozers, excavators. He's got a, a firewood business back there and, uh, and a topsoil business. And he's got a big screen and he screens the rocks out of, out of dirt to make topsoil. So I talked to him. He assured me they didn't stop. Well, I did. So I filed a complaint. My neighbor, 11 Moorfield Road, is on the, has been running the construction site on property zone residential. The property is also in a floodway. The property is located on Moorfield Road. Now, during the week of August 10, at least three large tractor trailers delivering huge rocks to the property. And the rocks were half the size of a Volkswagen fan. This past August? Yeah. And so I, I know the person that, that picked up the rocks. They came from, I don't know where they came from, but I knew the person that picked up the rocks. And he's, he's in the construction business. He has a property of his own, but he uses that property to drop great big boulders and to park his two dump trucks. So besides all that, he's allowing somebody to park or he's charging them to park their dump trucks there. It's ridiculous. So I took pictures. I took pictures of the of the dump truck of the truck coming in with the boulders on. The well, top soil pile. Have you shot that before? Yeah. All, all seventeen. Continue. I need a. Oh. oh. That's just the pictures. Also, there's a pile of scrap metal and debris, one of many piles of scrap on a property. Probably loads of scrap piles. This property was completely underwater, had four foot of water on it. The last flood. When the next flood comes, and it will, this debris will float downstream, plug up the pipes under Fox Hollow and damage other people's property. Behind the pile of debris, you can see, clearly see an area to the stream that has been filled in with dirt. Now, that's a floodway. You cannot fill in a floodway. I called the U.S. Geological Service, and I asked him, what can you do in a floodway? And he said one word, nothing. And yet, this is being filled in. And I took pictures of it. I do believe it's a violation of law to place fill next to a stream. It was right next to a stream. I do believe it's a violation of law to place fill next to a river, through a floodway. This property has numerous places that have been filled in. It also has areas that fill has been removed, all in a floodway. Number three and four, these pictures clearly show an area in a floodway that is in the process of being filled in. One week earlier, there was two large piles of dirt. These dirt piles were level and used to fill a low spot on the property, right next to the stream. 
and the pictures that I took that I have in here, that pile of dirt also has perforated pipe, a, a number of pieces of perforated pipe. Perforated pipe is used in leach fields. So did he dig up the whole leach field and put it right in the floodway, right next to the stream that leads directly to the Yusofus Creek? Certainly looks that way. Number five, this picture shows dirt piles with large concrete pieces. The concrete pieces are, are bigger than that table. Where did he pull them? These concrete pieces disappeared when the piles were leveled and used to spill. Picture seven is all pieces of construction. Uh, dump trucks, escalators, all in a residential zone. <coughs> Number 10 through 16 show pictures of heavy construction equipment he has stored on a property. He doesn't own those pieces of equipment. They're not his. He allows someone or he charges someone to park their equipment on his property. It's residential. You can't do that. This is all there now? I'll get to that. Also, he was under four feet of water last flood we had. So what did he do? He built a, a berm that high across the eastern part of my property and the western part of his property. And what the berm does, it directs flood water to my property. Now I've gone over this for a year. And anyway, we'll get to that. Yeah, I got them. Inspection report, and if you fill it out, 
It tells you everything you want to know. And there's a permanent record of it. Did she do it? No. No. When I asked her to do it, did she do it? No. And the state mandates it. There's an enforcement action chest checklist. And basically what it says is what did you do? Owner, address, phone, description, violation, action recommended by inspector. Did she fill that out? No. I asked her to, did she do it? No. She wasn't about to do it. And then there's a proof chart. What does she have to prove? She's got my pictures. That's proof. It's his property. There's the piles of dirt, the construction equipment. What more does she need? I'm sorry, I wanted my desk for that. And there's a follow-up letter that the state mandates. This is what she found on the property. This is the action she took. Did she fill that out? No. Even when I asked her, she, I, I gave her these forms, and she still wouldn't fill them out. I've never got a copy of these forms. I mean, it's only state law. That's all. And one thing I will say, though, before I go any place else, our town clerk is a custodian of public records. Our town clerk has always been courteous, friendly, and professional. She can't force anybody to make this and give them to her. She can't. Thanks, Uncle Tom. But she has <laughs> No, I'm kidding. He's not my uncle. She has done the job, and this isn't her fault at all. It's a building inspector and the zoning law. Now, she did send a letter to the of the planning board for a special use permit. Well, she said the violation was clear. If it was clear, why would he have to go to the planning board for a, a special use permit? So I looked at our planning board rules. You can't get a special use permit in a floodway for anything. You can't do anything. You can't cut a tree down. And yet they got all that junk going on. And they had such a flood that a house was taken off the foundation. And then they, they build a berm around that to protect the other house and to, and to flood my property. I, she hasn't done a thing about it. October 22, I performed an inspection of the property and with one of the property owners. I found that the violation no longer existed. The mound is still there. The construction equipment is still there. It's absolute willful blindness. If she couldn't find the three foot high berm that protects his house and puts the water on mine, all she had to do was come to me. I would have drove her on my property right to it. And you could see it. I was there when they put it up. But I didn't own the property. If I owned the property, they would have never put that up. Trust me on that. And tell me the violation is still eliminated. The only thing that was eliminated was one big pile of dirt. When that was eliminated, she says all the all the violations have been, they have it. She's blind at all of that. I asked for an inspection report again. And of what she inspected and what she found. What did I find? The records requested do not exist. So she, again, she didn't do what the law mandates her to do. 
Now, I asked for a, I asked, uh, I have a FOIL request. I asked for a map of the floodway in regard to that property. Is it a floodway? I just wanted a copy of the map because if we go to court, I need it. The records requested do not exist. Mr. Supervisor, tell me with a straight face, you don't have a floodplain map for Warfield Road. Of course we do. Then why does it say the records request that do not exist? I Who's the boss, you or her? And then, then the insult. The insult. I allow a person to store doors in a garage on my property. I go in there one day. He's over there unloading doors. I go in there and he says, hey, we got trouble with the planning board. Or, I said, yeah, planning board. I said, well, what, what is it? Notice violation, you're running an illegal business. I'm not running an illegal business. I'm letting you store some doors in my garage. That's not business. So he says, well, I took care of it, really. I said, what do you mean you took care of it? He says, I called them up. They said, yeah. And they issued a stop work order and a notice of violation. She said that the, the sign you have up is too close to the road. So they went online, got a copy of the sort of sign ordinance, measured it out, and it was 10 feet past where it had to be. Okay. They called her back and told her, she says, well, the sign's too big. They looked at the sign ordinance, they measured it, and it was one half the size that, uh, it was one half the size it could have been. Oh, she says, uh, I guess I won't have to worry about that. So she gave me a stop work order and a notice of violation without measuring the signs. And then she rescinded it without an ins over the phone. What's going on in that department? I asked the cop for a copy of the stock order board because after it was settled, they threw it away. The stock work order and notice a big red sign and notice a violation, they threw it away. Which is, you know, what do you do? Anyway, that has to be kept. That's a public record. Am I wrong? No, you're right. She didn't even make one out. And that was because I complained about that Warfield Road. So she's going to tell me who the boy is. And actually, someone should tell her she works for me. I'm her boy. Everybody in these rooms are boy. Not her. take some time, but they can dig them up. Because that's why we carry, uh, that's why we keep public records. Now, if she found violations on my property, which she must have done because she stopped work for her. State law says 
there to fill out a notice of apparent violation. She didn't. State law says they're, give, they're to give me an order to remedy. She didn't. And a stop work order. She did. And a complaint of violation. Who, who, who made the property owner enforce the officer? What she found, probable action, reported findings. She didn't. She did a stop work order on the phone or a ride by. Enforcement inspection report. She do it? Nah, we can do that. Unfortunately, that's what the law says she has to do. Enforcement officer, enforcement action checklist. Did she do it? Nah. And then a proof chart, which is just this is what I found, this is the witnesses, this is which you're mandated. We get a bill. And then I get the final insult. That's from you, Mr. Supervisor. I asked for the resumes of the building inspector and zoning officer at the time of their hire. Do they have the necessary licenses and inspections to be to carry that? And you wrote me, our code enforcement officer, building inspector, Donna Lamonte. Lemoyne. Lemoyne was hired March background construction. After the initial hire, she was signed up for New York's building inspector course, the satisfactory completing this. And you sent me a copy of the state of New York code enforcement official. Now, a code enforcement official is totally different from a building inspector. I can be a code enforcement officer with a 30 day online course. I couldn't be a building inspector in three years. And I get this. She took the building inspector course. What's that? She did take the building inspector course. I will give you that certification. Is she a licensed building inspector? Yes. That's what I asked for. Why does a simple yes take a letter to Albany and make them? I could write a letter to Albany to get that. It's easy. It's called transparency. Is she licensed? Yes. I did say yes. No, you didn't. Yeah, but after I had to jump through hoops, so I shouldn't have to. It says the records do not exist. Well, yes, they do. I didn't say anything about records not existing. Oh, that's right. I just didn't get anything. You had five days to answer. They didn't. I appealed to you. You had 10 days to answer. You missed the deadline, so I wrote to Albany, and boom, there it is. That's the way it went. No, Tom, no. When I accept your, that's your acceptance when I accept it. Then what he wrote back was his answer. So they, technically, we have 30 days to answer, just so you know. You're right, you're right. I'm wrong on that. But we did, that's when I accept it from you, that's me accepting, or if it's an email, say thank you, got it. And then we have 30 days from that day. I still should have got it. And you got it pretty quick. I'm really excited. Whether there was nothing there. Donna, Donna, she gave it to me. That's my record. I bought and paid for it. It just, it burns me up. Now, does anybody have any questions? Oh, after the building inspector left, they went right back to work. Same thing. And I lost that sale. She says there was no filling in of the floodway. You'd have to be blind. The whole thing is filled in next to the stream. It runs into the utopia. It's all filled in. 
next to these sofas. It's all filled in. I don't have any questions. I would just thank you for bringing this all to light. You know, that kind of information is, is pertinent to all of us. So it allows us to, to go back, revisit, reprimand if need be, and make sure that all these violations, if there are, which it seems that there are legitimate violations, get taken care of. So thank you. One, one other thing. The Phoenicia Hotel in Bern, that wasn't any your fault. That was an absolute disgrace. I had people coming up fishing and said, this is the only town in the world that let a burned out building sit there for four years in a pile on Main Street. No other town in the world would let it do that. We have a building in Pine Hill right now that's been three years. It's in a pile of ash. Three years. We've got a junkyard on 28 that's been there five years. If you want to make this town nicer, have some enforcement on that. The stuff that burns your eyes, that's all you got to get. Just the stuff that hurts you, make the town nice. <clears throat> somebody's got to somebody's do their job. I, and being a police officer, I went after people that I was friends with. It, it's not easy. But you got to do it. Or take another job. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not my best. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. light on Kevin is that light on right by the switch there? of course um, not that I have any knowledge of particulars of what that man was discussing um, I've never met him before but knowing the person's property who he's adjacent to, I would just caution that I think some of this mission is motivated by a neighborly feud of sorts. Uh, I would be curious when and how he got those pictures taken, because I believe he did it without permission to be on the property. And I believe this all comes out of an incident where the neighbor that he's referring to publicly accused him of shooting his dog. So it goes back a little farther. Again, I don't know much about his specific complaint, but I think he is 
fueled by um, a bit of ego that he wants to do something publicly to his neighbor for publicly accusing him of shooting his dog. So just to add a little bit more color to an already Thank you for the background. Uh, I know it's not what you uh, I, I just want to say, I find it curious, the Time Warner franchise fee is derived from the customers themselves. I see a 20% increase anticipated uh, for the franchise fee. So I'm curious if you're anticipating a 20% increase in usership, which would mean 20% more people, or 18%. Um, or is there an 18% rate hike coming to increase that the 18% franchise fee? Comes? It was what came in from last year. That's all also I'm going was underestimated by. last year. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Um, and I'll take note of Phoenicia Water District budget. There's an increase of $8,000, which equates to 10%. $8, yeah, that's, that's all going to get changed. There was, <coughs> there was a, what I thought was a shortfall in user fees, but more came in than the, the readings just came in and the prices just came in. I have to rework the water. It won't be that high. Okay. Um, what I'm getting at is $8,000 is 10% of their budget. $5,000 is still sitting there, and I'm yet to see a resolution to auction off the truck that's to recoup going in this week. Son of the funds after a year. If plus. Eric was still here, he would have told you it's going in with. But just put the resolution in to say we're going to auction it off so you can start auctioning it off. I mean, I keep coming yeah, up. It's all after going month. with all the. I keep going month after month. This is the highway here. stuff is so all going $5, together. $5,000 that were lost by you yeah. of the Phoenician Water yeah. District money. Yeah. It's clear. No, everybody's clear on it. I just. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Put a resolution. One more thing that I forgot to say. Based on that, Robert's Rules of Order mandates that you do the Pledge of Allegiance, say the Pledge of Allegiance prior to each meeting. So that's mandated by this board. So each committee should be doing exactly what's mandated. Whether they like it or not, they know it's public law, or New York State law, not public law, that, uh, you know, a right to free speech and this and that. Each committee will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. To she refused, the per this person refused to even but each committee will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, I just wanted to make clear that yep. everybody knew that. Yeah. That's mandated, you know, it's not, it's the law says that you have a right to speech. Each board and each committee will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And to your point about the planning board, remember that all of these committees, which now there are 15 or so in town, are comprised of volunteers who may not be as familiar with public procedure as some of us are, you being on the ZBA, let's be on town board. It's uh, been a personal mission of mine over the last month or so to educate some of those people and to make sure that everybody's running a tight ship, that all the meetings are run the same, the same agenda, running in order. So we're working on it. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything, but I have a suggestion in terms of people that join committees where they sort of have a workshop on just the protocol and just sort of general housekeeping kind of things for all of them. And that way you sort of have a standard that everyone should hopefully maintain. Great idea, so. Angel. Thanks. <laughs> With that, I have, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Nobody died this month. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you next month.